Hi friends, welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to take this thrifted washboard and turn it into this. And then we're going to take this little box that I got free and turn it into this. And when I went to the dump the other day, I got this cute table. We're going to turn it into this. So let's get started. So this is, we're going to start out with the washboard and it's a uh, something you hang on the wall. It's got a little box on it and you would put your greenery or stuff that you would put around in probably a laundry room or a bathroom. So I'm going to sand off the wording on the top because I'm going to do something different and I want it to not be there and come through the paint when I get ready to do that. So first I'm going to take my special stain that I make up with antique wax, some water, and a little bit of black paint to give it a different uh, texture and tone, and I'm going to paint the wood all over. Careful to keep it away from the copper middle part because I want to keep that there. So I wipe it all down and then when I flip it over to look at the back to see if I need to paint that or what's happening, I realize that the copper that's on the front, I don't like that so much anymore. I love this back piece. So I grabbed a screwdriver and I popped off the staples that it had holding it on and decided to flip that over and put that on, look at that, on the front. It's beautiful. I love it. So now I'm going, because that's out, now I can just stain the back and finish it off and then wipe that back as well like I did the front. So now that that's all done, wiped down and dried, I'm going to affix the, the little copper panel to the back of it with some staples, making sure that I have that awesome patinaed front that used to be on the back. What a great find. I can't believe that I found that like that. It's beautiful. So I got some really cool stencils from a friend of mine. Her and her husband made them up for me and sent them and it is a crow holding a string with the star attached to it and also I have it in the bigger size and then later on I will show you uh, another one that I got as well and in two sizes and I'm so excited to use these I could not wait to get my hands on them so here we go so I'm using a little bit of some grain sack that I had uh, I don't know in my stash and I'm cutting it down so that I can put uh, this crow over the top of it and do a little stencil. These stencils are the mesh stencils, so where you see it light colored is a mesh material in there. And they're really easy to use and very, uh, very nice. So I'm just going to fix that to the middle and then put a little bit of black paint on there. This is folk art paint, the multi-surface paint. And I'm just applying it to the stencil and then I have just, just this little wooden tag that got paint on it at one point and I just started using it as a scraper to get the paint down into the mesh or through the mesh to the material. I did not defuzz this because I knew it was going to go right on to this material and that would defuzz it and I wanted it to stick well so the paint would not go through to the edges where I didn't want it. So there we go. It is all on there and I think it came out great. It's not completely solid which is fine because I don't want it to be. I like things to be rustic, primitive, and distressed so without having to distress it it's already done for me. So I'm just trimming it up and then taking off some of the string to uh, make some frayed edges all, of, all of the way around. 
Once I get that done, I am using some hot glue. And yes, even though I love that metal piece in the middle, I am going to affix this over the top of it. You can still see a lot of it from the edges. And I cut this down so that I could see a lot of that. But this is what my plan was for it, so I'm gonna just gonna keep going with it. And I love how it looks. I love this stencil. It's so cool. So now I'm just taking a little bit of folk art paint. This is in the color Mushroom, and I love this color, and I thought it would go well with the uh, burlap or grain sack that I have there. So I covered that all over with two coats, and now I'm just distressing it back a little bit and sanding it down. And now I'm taking a little bit of black paint and just going over the top to make it look distressed. I did also sand the stained areas on this. I don't think I showed it, but I did just distress the edges just a little bit. So I have some rub-on letters, and this uh, had some nice big ones, so I decided to put the word crow over the top, and I think they came out really cool. The cool thing about these rub-ons is right here, didn't all come off and you can replace it because you can see through it and then you can just get that piece that didn't come off originally and it will you can just re-rub it on there and it will come right off so there we go and then we got the W and you just keep rubbing and gently pull it and it came off really nicely so here's the other stencil that I had made up it says Old Crooked River Seed Company with a couple of uh, crows and then it says quality seeds and then a date uh, since 1883 it looks like and all I want is the old off this one and again when I had these made I had a big one and a little one made because I knew that I would be different doing different sized projects so there we go, we've got Old and Crow. And now I'm using the backer for the stencil to cover up the words that I had put on with the rub on so that it wouldn't stick. And I'm adding Company to the bottom. So it will say Old Crow Company. And I love how this came out, it is so cool. So I'm just adding a little bit of paint and then again using my little wooden uh, tag to scrape the paint and get it down into the mesh. And there we go. Now it didn't quite come out all the way because I was using such a small area. So I did by hand just take a little bit of black paint and fill in some of the spots that I wanted filled in. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I like it. I like the imperfect on these. I'm taking a little black and tan checked ribbon that I got, I believe this was from Hobby Lobby, and wrapping it around the front of the little box that is attached to the front of the washboard. And I'm making a little simple bow to go on the front. I'm not a huge bow person in primitive rustic decor, but I thought this would look really cute on there. So I'm just going to make a couple loops and then I'm going to attach it with some black twine that I have and then tie it so that it makes the nice cute big loops. Now before I attach the loop to the front or the bow to the front I'm going to take some of this black twine and make some uh, I don't know lines it looks like I wrapped it around but I'm not going to wrap it around the whole piece I'm just going to attach it in the very middle underneath where the bow is going to go and just crisscross them to just give it a little more, I don't know, dimension, decor, uh, just to add a little touch to it. So I attach it in the middle and then I will go back and attach it to the sides so that they stay and I'm going to put my bow on there as well.
this next project is from my friend Kathy. She gave me a box of goodies and this was in there and I thought that I would do something with it today. So this was a freebie. It has some writing on the top so I'm going to take some heavy grit sandpaper and try and sand that down a little bit. It is burned in so I would have to sand a lot to get that to be totally gone. So now with the help of my granddaughter, you can see her in the background, she has the heat gun on cool and she's blowing out the dust from all my sanding. So while she's doing that, I'm going to show you the paints that I got from Folk Art. So this is a package of six that you get and I'm going to use paint from this. So you get the Wicker White Sunflower Forest Moss Honeycomb Medium Gray and the Wrought Iron, which is like a black. We're going to work with a medium gray today. It's very much like an elephant gray. It's a very pretty gray color. So we're going to use that. When it dries, it dries a little bit darker than what you're seeing here. And I really like the color. I think it's very pretty. I'll put the link below in the description if you're interested in purchasing that. So here it is, two coats on here, all done, and I am going to take a dry brush of my Folk Art black paint and just brush it on and distress it. I did go over it with my sandpaper and distress it, the edges, but I also wanted black over the gray to uh, add a little bit of distressing on there as well. I have this roll of chicken wire that I got from Hobby Lobby and I am going to cut it so that I can put it across the top shelf. I'm going to flip this upside down opposite from the way it was originally and we're going to put this across the top so when we put things in the top it will stay. I will link some of the products if I can find them down in the description from Amazon if you guys are interested in some of these. So I'm just making sure that it's going to fit all the way across. And then I could have taken this out to spray it, but it was a super hot day and I decided to just take my black paint and go over it with that. I wanted a black chicken wire strip. So I'm just going to go over it uh, all the way down and I go up and down and side to side with it to get all the chicken wire covered or as much as possible. Once it's dry, I'm going to affix it with my staple gun to the inside wood piece in there. Now I'm going to take my big old Crooked River Seed Company stencil and I'm just going to use the top piece on this one. So this one I am going to defuzz because it's going on wood and I don't, even though the piece is dry, I don't want it to stick too heavily. So I'm just taking it and putting it on a piece of uh, rag that I have and defuzzing it a little bit so it's not so sticky. Then I'm just putting it on the bottom piece there. I'm just trying to get it in the middle and so that I can get all the words on there evenly. There you go. And then I'm just going to take some Folk Art Black paint and put that little dabs of black on there and then again I'm going to take my uh, wood tag and just push that paint down into the mesh or down in through the mesh. These work so nicely and also I immediately wash them after in the sink because the kitchen is right next to me and they come out very nice and clean and then I just let them dry and they're still sticky and they work so great. So I appreciate Tracy and Dan working on these for me. They did such a great job. So here is the old Crooked River Seed Company stencil. Look how cool that looks. I think I got it a little bit crooked but that's okay. None of the stamps that you get are ever straight in an old box or whatever. They're all kind of just flopped on there. So I thought it was okay. 
So I'm just going to tape the words on the smaller stencil saying the same things because I want to take these crows with the star in the middle and stencil it onto either side of the words using the same technique, adding paint and then my wooden tag and just rubbing that paint right down in there. And it's okay if it doesn't go all the way through because I like the distress look. And of course I use the backing of the stencil to uh, put it over the words so that they so that the stencil does not stick to the words. There we go, I almost stuck it on there. There we go. I almost stuck it. It might have been okay because they were dry, but it's hard to say. So there we go, we have the crows and the star on either side. Taking some of my uh, antique wax that I have and I'm going over the top to give it a little more age, aged look. And here's the finished piece. This table was a great find. I found it at the local dump when I was going to do trash and people will set stuff aside if it's in good shape and but they don't want it. So I saw this and I said, oh, I need to do something fun with this. Even though it's really pretty the way it is, I wanted to make it more primitive. So I sanded down because it was a little shiny, sanded it down just a little bit and then sprayed it with some black Rust-Oleum spray paint. I took the, I spun the top off from it and I am painting it with my Waverly in plaster paint. I love this color. And then I took some Mod Podge and did, once those were dry, and I put a Mod Podge over the top, a nice layer, and I'm going to take this decoupage paper with this beautiful sheep on the front and some grain sack stripes on either side, and I'm going to put it on to the top. I love this paper. This came from Zazzle, so if you're interested, go check them out. They have so many different ones that you could choose from. You kind of get lost in searching for them, but they're all beautiful. Uh, and I really loved this one, so I got it. I'm just trying to get it straight, and I'm kind of playing with fire here, uh, m removing it and laying it back down and trying to get the wrinkles out as best I can because it's very thin, it is tissue paper. And once it gets wet, it gets very, it starts to uh, just get very flimsy. And if you rub it too hard, it could even rip. So this is the lightweight, I think, I can't remember what it's actually called, but it's the lightest weight that you can get. And it's very inexpensive. But I just love the paper. So finally I got it down where I want in the grain sack stripes I wanted in wanted just to be just right and so I am now doing a layer over the top of the Mod Podge to seal it in. So now I'm just taking a heavily uh, gridded sandpaper and sanding off the edges once it dries a little bit. It's not completely dry but the edges are pretty dry and I want to get that paper off so that I can reapply some Mod Podge around the edges just to keep them down in case I missed any spots. And just going around all the edges. I took the bottom once it was dry and I gave it a quick sand uh, just on the edges of the legs and then up the middle just a little bit. It's a very light sanding. Then I took it outside and sealed it with some spray sealer. Now because my paper didn't go around the edge on all the sides, it was a little bit short, I am taking a little bit of black paint and just going around uh, a few, uh, did a few coats to get it covered and just going around the edges to give it a nice finish. 
taking my antique wax and I am rubbing it all over the top. Now this has been spray sealed also so when I go to wipe it back it should just stay just a little bit over the top and not too dark. So I use kind of a pouncing and then I rub a little bit and as you can see there are a bunch of uh, wrinkles that I could not get out and there's even a couple bubbles but you know what it adds to the distressed look and I really really like it and I think if somebody ends up with this besides me they will like it as well so I'm just going around and around and then I will take it out and spray seal it one more time and see how that works I may need to do a heavier seal on it at some point Let me know if you have a favorite down in the comments. Check the description out for any of the products that I use today. If I find links, I will put them in. And I appreciate you watching. Have a great day.